Hello everyone, this is Varstrom eBike. Today I'm here to show how to install Tongsheng TSDZ8 mid-drive motor. First of all, I found a hardtail mountain bike, which is the more common type of mountain bike on the schedule. I wanted this installation video to be as streamlined and easy to understand as possible, so I didn't include some details on the removal of the bike parts. So as you can see in the video, I've gone ahead and removed the pedals and sprocket set. The first thing we need to remove is the bottom bracket. Depending on the type of BB that your bike has, you'll need different tool. For my bike, I'm going to use that one, but if you have a Shimano Holotech BB, you'll need this one. Or you could use the spanner included in the kit. Very often, a good amount of torque is needed, so an extended wrench like this one might come in handy. The bottom bracket can be easily unscrewed using a spanner in the direction of the video. It's easy to fit the motor on this bike, but you may find various obstacles, like wires, screws, or even bulges. In this case, you'll have to use a file or a power tool. Once the motor fits in, you'll have to make sure it does not touch the frame here. If it does, you'll have to use BB spacers. Installation of Triangular Fixing Adapter On the TSDZ2, this fixing plate was flat. I think this one will perform better and hold the motor in place. A tool is included in the kit for tightening this nut. But for this one, I feel more comfortable using my own tool. It is important to lift the motor against the frame because the torque of the motor will make it go upward. So in a sense, the motor will rest on the frame. It's also better for the clearance under the bike. Install the second lock nut. There should also be enough clearance between the chain ring and the frame to avoid any damage caused by friction. If it's too close, or even touches it, you'll either have to use spacers or use a smaller chain ring. When I received this kit, only the 44T was available, but it's fine on this bike. Securing the chain ring, installing the chain and the protective cover, Pay attention to the crank. There is a L and R one, just like the pedals. Use screws to secure and install the crank and speed sensors and magnets. On the TSDZ2, the speed sensing was too sensitive and could cause dysfunction of the motor. We'll see how it does on the TSDZ8. Once you plugged in everything, zip tie the cables and make sure they are safe. One T4 cable.
Connect the 1T4 cable, making sure the arrows are aligned for proper connection. Okay, now I'll install the two LCDs for testing them, but of course, you'll only need one. This is the 810S display and the corresponding mounting method. This is the EKD-01, a display that has recently become popular as a replacement for the 500C. But note that it is a Tongsheng protocol and is not compatible with Beifang motors. This LCD has a USB-C port and Bluetooth. The throttle positioning can be an issue depending on your bike parts. So try several placements until you find the correct one. Sometimes for perfect results, you might need to change a thing or two. I'll handle it in order to make the throttle and the gear shifter functional. You don't have to install the brake sensors for the kit to work, but if you still want to do it, here's one way to do so. Okay, now I'll plug the battery and try. The dead zone adds a layer of security. This is how you can test the brake sensors and find the sweet spot. Let's test the LCD now. Take a quick look at all the features of the EKD-01, and if you're feeling material, skip ahead to 922. Take a quick look at all the features of the 810S, and if you're feeling material, skip ahead to 1018. Take a quick look at all the features of the 810S, and if you're feeling material, skip ahead to 1047.
Let's get a feel for the maximum speed and sound when unloaded. When this speed it's like an airplane the engine, engine, LOL. The when the speed hits the limit, spinning. the motor suddenly stops spinning. I hope it won't do that once loaded. We'll see that after. I hope it won't do that once loaded. We'll see that after. Installation complete. You'll find it's pretty much the same as the BBS install. More of a detail difference. This is a picture of my carbon fiber mountain bike with the motor and battery fitted. The overall weight, excluding pedals, is around 17 kg. As the motor is a torque motor, I am not worried about its strong power breaking my bike. As you can see in the picture, I tried my best to tidy up the cables and to keep the bike tidy. I didn't focus on the details of tidying up the cables in this video, so I'll make a separate video on that if you want to see it. Overall, TSD Z8 installs in much the same way as the BBS, with just a little difference in the details of the installation. It's worth mentioning that the TSD Z8 is slightly louder than the BBS when operating unloaded, but unfortunately I don't have a decibel detector at the moment, so there's no way to provide a visual comparison. But as a person who often deals with Beifang and Tongsheng products, I think the TSD Z8 is louder in operation. In the next issue, I'm going to do a road test, and I've chosen a lighter carbon fiber bike. And I, I know that some of you have anxiety that a carbon fiber frame won't be able to withstand a powerful motor. So I'm going to test that as well. I'll be testing on flat roads, forest roads, and gravel roads. Well, this is Barstrom E-Bike, and that's all for this video. I hope you guys find my setup video useful. And if you have any questions, please leave me a message in the comment section, and I'll answer them one by one. We'll see you soon in the next road video. Bye.